Welcome to the North Penn School District's Board of School Directors 1017th meeting, February 11th, 2014. Sounds a little tinny, doesn't it? Yeah. All right, uh, let's start with a special action meeting. We're going to start with a Pledge of Allegiance led by Mr. Schilling. <clears throat> Thank you, Jim. All right, since this is a special action meeting tonight, we're going to open the floor for audience and citizens. Anybody wishing to speak to the board should feel free to step forward, state your name and address for the audience and citizens logbook. You want me to read the disclaimer before you talk? <laughs> uh, uh, good evening, and uh, thank you all for serving. I know it's a, it's a terrible burden, but, you know, we must press on. Uh, Good evening, and thank you for your tireless service. Oh, my name is William Patchell, and I reside at 404 Bonnie Lane, and uh, I've been a resident for over 20 years. Very satisfied. Um, before I begin, the senior taxpayers are well aware of Act One, and uh, we would like to state, or myself would like to state, that I hope that we have no tax increase Pass the index. Any tax increase may be matched by equal cost cutting. I'm sure there is room for stringent audits across the board. I would like to ask the board if they had any thoughts concerning the varsity football team, its injuries, and if you could think of solutions to cure the problems which I had brought to your attention last meeting. And uh, I hope you've been able to give some time. Would anyone like to respond to that? If you would like, I'd like some comments. Yes, would you? I, I read through your reports, and I have been following this issue for quite a long time. I participated in a couple of uh, big discussions about this with other people from other districts and also in Harrisburg. There are some things we can do in the future, uh, buy different types of equipment, the newer technologies that have come available in the last 12 months to help this issue. You've seen actually some, if you watch the Olympics, you got a chance to see some of the newer equipment they're using. Uh, I think that's the first step that we can take. Um, I don't know what where we can go beyond that because what we have is we need a better tracking system for injuries. We need probably a little bit more stringent requirements. The difficulty with that is we don't want to violate anybody else's rights doing that. And I think the improvement in technology can help us. I don't know how much that would do overall, but I think it's a great first step to move forward with. I had contacted the Rydell company and with the gentleman that would... Uh, is the sales representative, which all does the helmet and the checking and everything, and the hit system, which they have, would, uh, I believe Virginia Tech has that, it's quite sophisticated, able to record any injuries, the velocity, the type of concussion, and uh, of course there is a paper trail then, and probably some people wouldn't really like a paper trail because a paper trail would enable people to like know what's going on, and it's much better not to have that for some. Well, he said himself. Be, be careful, why would, though, Mr. Okay. Patchell. Remember, you're talking about people's medical I know, records and I know. personal All right. information. I know. They have, uh, right. There's our, our obstacles. Uh, I Bill? suggest, yes. Bill? Uh, I also went over to the high school, yes. and I asked about this, and I'm told that the guys on the, on the O-line, mm -hmm. that they're specifically taught how to tackle, that they have a trainer just for that. And I'm also told that other schools have the same thing. So everybody seems to be jumping on the bandwagon at how to hit versus you see in the NFL, the guys go like a torpedo, they hit their head against the guy yes. to cause damage. Our guys are trained now and they're training the people in the other high schools the proper techniques of, of tackling so that these injuries are not as great as, as what we're seeing. Fortunately, we are having this dialogue now, and I doubt without that dialogue, we would even be approaching this point in our journey to correcting the problem. I suggest that our liability is very real. Costs are very real. What is the difference between a school club and a fully sanctioned varsity sport? Could you tell me? The legal definition? The ice hockey team. It's a club, right? Ice hockey club is okay, actually, we that's what it's called. The club, it's called right? a team. I think it actually is called the North Penn Ice Hockey Club. Okay, we support the club. I believe the uh, compensation, $6,000. 
Yes. Okay. And recognition at a high school. We have a, a special thing for their okay. awards and awards. Okay. Is the North Penn ice hockey uh, less of a liability from a legal standpoint, Mr. Dooley? What would be the ramifications of the uh, of the uh, liability for a club as opposed to a sanctioned sport by the district? Um, Mr. Patchell, a couple of things. Number yes. one, this is public comment, and you have every right to get up and make comments. This is not public interrogation. No one up here has a duty to engage in a give and take with you or to answer your questions. But secondly, with regard to questions of liability, I am most certainly not going to be offering any kind of opinion in this forum with regard to liability. Well, that's a perfectly acceptable answer, and I hope the viewing public is well aware that uh, there are questions to be answered, and a uh, resolution to that problem could be pursued, but at some future date. Uh, or uh, the payments to this club are about $6,000. Could somebody give me the payment for the varsity football team? How much do we actually invest in the varsity football team? Would it be 70000 80000 you could put a, a right to no request in for it. We could probably figure All right. it out. I don't know if we have the obligation to create information, but I think we could figure that out. Salaries. Well, uh, I, I just, salaries. from my own uneducated guess, I assume it would probably be about 10 times as high. Um, we have how many coaches, uh, How many coaches say, on the soccer team, how many coaches are, are doing our varsity soccer? One? An assistance? I'd have to find out. Okay. Well... I, I would think if we did some due diligence, we would find out it's a much lesser number. Uh, does the coach of a club gain pension credits if you are an instructor and you work for the... Uh, Do they take pension out of it? No. The payments in their computation for their pension, the money that they were given as a coach if they're go, goes the district, into their compensation package. So there is a legacy cost involved in this. I don't believe if you were in a club, that would be applicable. I don't think we pay salaries to clubs. Bill, Bill, yes. if they're an employee, at the end of the year, it's in the W-2. Okay. If they're an employee, if they're an independent contractor, that's different. So then a club, a club would be separate from the district, although we are supporting it, but they would if not be an, <clears throat> You're not listening. If yes. they're an employee, no matter the compensation, it's in the W-2 at the end of the year. End of story. All right. So uh, I'll continue. Let us make a comparison with the varsity soccer. I got uh, the information about the injuries. Uh, the soccer, they had 48 players. 46 were able to finish. Only one concussion. Seems much less than the... Uh, Injuries which we had with the football team, 99 players, only 87 finished, with 10 times the number of concussions. Well, I wonder why no representative of, of the sport, which I question the football, has ever come before the board and made some that, that's something positive or in defense of what has happened. I, I'm having a dialogue with this over and over and over on my side. I would really love to have someone represent the other side to give their opinion on how this is really working. Uh, I'm suggesting that the board consider making the varsity football team a club. And I believe that would remove, I'm not sure, that would remove us and place a firewall of liability. Son, you joined a club. We're no, we support it, but we do not sanction it. That would make a tremendous difference. Say the cost of the football team came to about with the wear and tear on the field and the uniforms and everything. I believe the ice hockey team buys their own uniform, right? So if the football team was a club, oh, yes, you need to buy your helmet. You need to buy your equipment. You need to pay for the coach. You need to do all these peripheral items. And if that were, we had 98 players and it was $100,000, do you believe, I, I guess if it was very important to you, you'd, you'd pay the $1,000 per player to play. They play it over at the uh, ice hockey. I believe they pay quite a bit of money, but they enjoy the sport. 
and they have no problem making the payments, although we do help them with a payment. Now, if we're having all this difficulty with Act 1, wanting uh, uh, referendums for additional money, I think we should scrutinize a lot of these areas. And I warn you that if we have somebody with a really debilitating injury, it's going to come back as a class action lawsuit, and I don't have any idea how much that would be. If this was set up as a club, look, we support it, but we don't sanction it. I believe that would be a viable way to handle the problem of litigation and concussion. And you must admit, 10 times as many concussions, I suggest that we make our soccer team the number one thing that which we are promoting. It seems much safer. And I believe with the FIFA and the World Cup, quite a few people around the world are playing this sport. Perhaps we could become the premier high school in the entire Commonwealth. Oh, you need to go to North Penn. They're absolutely fantastic. I wonder why no re the public will, in time, when they consider about what's really important, academic positions? Oh, well, we had to not fill one position because we're spending all this money for this other thing. A shortage of new technology? Not bought? Does any varsity sport print trading cards to give out to kids in the elementary grades? I wonder, who else does that? Does anybody, any other sport in this district, print out little uh, trading cards? Does the, do the water polo girls do that? Do the, I believe it's only the football team do that. I wonder why. We need to stop favoring some sports over others. You have to admit, that's what we're doing. Lastly, why did Temple University stop some sport? Plain and simple, they can't afford it. They've decided we need to really focus on that we're a university. It's really nice, but you know what? Gymnastics, only 17 colleges are competing. Thousands and thousands of college. And then the girls say, oh gee, I got a full scholarship. Why are they terminating it? Because maybe we got some other things that we got to do that are more important. Academics, I support learning. I support academics, I support infrastructure, energy stars, but it's time to re-examine what we do and who we are. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bill. Anyone else? All right, let's move forward. Recommend approval of the minutes of the 1016th meeting held on January 16th, 2014 as circulated. Motion by Mr. Schillen, second by Mr. O'Donnell. Comments or questions? All those in favor? Approved. Superintendent's report, Dr. Dietrich. Thank you, Mr. President. Recommend approval of the preliminary 2014-2015 budget and that the administration is authorized to seek re required referendum exceptions in accordance with Act 1. So moved. Motion by Mr. O'Donnell, second by Mrs. Leonard. Okay, okay Mr. Schock, if you okay. uh, give a... a Brief overview of what the uh, preliminary 2014-2015 budget would be, please. Uh, yes. Uh, under Act 1, since 2006, the budget process st starts much earlier. So we consider this really a financial forecast. We're looking at six months of revenue and expenditure information. Uh, the preliminary issues that we're dealing with at this point uh, are have quite a bit of uncertainty. One is we have budgeted for 4.2 million in charter school payments. Uh, we know that the uh, retirement rate is going up uh, per some rate increases that were approved a year ago. The governor is proposing some changes to that. Uh, we have preliminary estimates on health care cost increases. And so after we look at all of those increases on the expenditure side, the expenditures will total uh, $227,482,000. Now, on the revenue side, we have seen some good information uh, recently on the local earned income tax and the addition of properties for the uh, property taxes. And so we are seeing strong local revenues. Uh, we hope that will continue. We will have better, much better information by April and May when we finally have to make a decision on the uh, proposed tax rate. The uh, other major thing that we're looking to, that we're recommending to do on the revenue side is to 
drawdown from the retirement rate stabilization fund an amount of $1 million to uh, go toward funding the budget deficit. Uh, but even if we raise taxes by the 2.1% plus the amount allowed under the retirement rate referendum exception, uh, we would still be drawing down uh, 3.2 million in fund balance. Uh, now we are currently at an 8% fund balance, so about 16 million, but we would be drawing that down. Now, of course, the major uncertainty is that 4 million plus in, in the charter school payments at this point that are budgeted. So uh, this budget uh, has these uncertainties. It's very early. Uh, one of the major initiatives this year is to uh, improve the accuracy of all estimates on the expenditure and the revenue side of the budget. Uh, during the recession, some of these things have been difficult to, to estimate very accurately. We had to have some more caution than usual, but uh, we think we will be able to improve all these estimates, and that should help us on the bottom line this year. Uh, some of the cost reductions of recent years, we had to be a little cautious, so we have always ended the a year in recent years with more money than we expected, which of course is good news. We've put that to good use in various ways, particularly with capital reserves, but a major initiative involving all of the administrative staff is to improve all re uh, expenditure and revenue estimates throughout the entire budget. So at this point, uh, we would adopt this budget. We would file with the state for the referendum exceptions. They have. Uh, a month or so to approve that, and we will just continue to work forward. As we've done in recent years, uh, we would propose to give written updates to the board as monthly progress reports, let you know what's happening. Uh, for example, the governor's budget was just announced last week. That appears to give us about $600,000 more than we had uh, budgeted, even on the documents before you, but uh, there are some uncertainties about uh, some restrictions in the spending of that money. So we will learn more about that in the next week or two and, and be able to uh, make a more accurate budget with that. So I think that's enough of an overview for tonight. If there are any other comments or questions, I'll be open to answer any questions. Uh, the budget documents will be posted on the school's website and it might be publicly available for the next 30 days before, or actually, what's the adoption rule? The, uh, the budget documents have been posted uh, f uh, going back uh, several weeks already. Uh, they can be found under www.northpenn.org uh, under the school board tab, and there's a school economics 101, and you'll find the entire budget document there. Uh, that budget document uh, is in a standardized format. We're required to put it into uh, that format, but it's not uh, particularly user-friendly to the general public. If anyone wants some more information, they can uh, contact the business office and we'll be happy to provide provide more information. Thank you. All right, let's move the agenda forward. We have a motion and second. Motion, second. Right. motion by Mr. O'Donnell, I believe. Second was Mrs. Leonard, right? Any other comments? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, thank you. Item B is personnel. We recommend approval of personnel items as listed A and B. So, uh, motion by Mr. Laddick. Second by Mr. O'Donnell. Comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And I recommend approval of contracts per item BA3, copies of which are on file in the Office of Business Administration. So moved. Motion by Mrs. Murphy. Second. Second by Mr. Schilling. Comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. The public should be aware the board met in executive session this evening from 6.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. to discuss matters of personnel and litigation and negotiations. Motion to adjourn. So moved.